So, hello everyone. So, we will continue with the topic measurement of sensory perception. So, as we have mentioned that uh, the two point discrimination test where the we try to measure the threshold distance where a person can discriminate the two uh, different points of contact. So, as we have mentioned at the finger it is uh, very low it is around 2.5 millimeter and at the calf or thigh uh, region it is uh, very high. So, this is the lowest zone highest zone and this uh, is the data uh, car was uh, taken from the same data. Now, if you see the in tabular form so this uh, green color that uh, finger zone and so it is a uh, very low and at the calf it is a so that the finger the sensitivity is very high. So, and two point threshold is discriminated by the size of receptive field. So, that uh, if size of receptive field is more that means, it will give a higher distance okay. and extent of overlap if overlap is more that means, it will give it will not be able to give the proper sensation. So, uh, it will not be able to discriminate. So, that uh, that is how the extent of overlap is and tactile sensation it uh, that is uh, this uh, the touch sensation it varies with the with the person to person at different person different person will have different level of sensation ok 2 point threshold distance and depends of the nature of the stimuli. If the it is a touch then it he may not be able to detect, but if the pressure it, it becomes pressure if it is or it if it becomes pain or if it is warm or cold. So, depending on the nature of stimulation, so it can detect it the uh, this uh, value changes that is a 2 point, 2 point threshold distance changes person to person and with the nature of stimulus. Okay. And properties of stimulus okay, uh, such as frequency, duration and amplitude. So, if it is uh, it is uh, say frequency is high the stimulus uh, say vibrating uh, stimulus if the stimulus frequency is changing. So, that also affect the value this. So, for a particular type of stimulus this and for a particular person for a part it will give certain value even as we have seen it changes with the at different places okay. like uh, type of overlap this we have seen this uh, picture earlier also. So, if it the overlap is very high that means, sensation will be totally different. Okay. The psychophysiological uh, physical thresholds for a particular type of stimulation can be measured by minimum noticeable intensity of stimulus that we have discussed in psychophysics. Okay. Here also that the total range here it is not only the stimulus intensity of stimulus here it is a the what is the range of that stimulus. So, that stimulus that is a minimum noticeable intensity suppose it is touch. So, it is a suddenly it is a it is a it is just we can uh, sense we start sensing. So, which is called intensity I minimum. Okay. So, it is the minimum amplitude of stimulus keeping other stimulus properties constant okay, when a person starts sensing it. So, minimum amplitude is there it is there and on the other hand when the person start sensing as pain the same stimulus. So, on the the maximum stimulus intensity I max is the typically that can be the threshold amplitude for pain receptors. So, just noticeable touch and then up to the pain receptors that total range it is a this is the range. So, it is 
related with the maximum dynamic range. In decibel, we can express in terms of R is log of 10 I max by I minimum. This ratio it is the it is called the range of stimuli. This is also a measure of sensory perception for a particular sensation for a particular sensation a person what is the minimum and maximum sensation limit that can be expressed in terms of R okay, dynamic range. So, suppose something is pressing. So, after at what point we st I am starting I have started sensing and up to which point I am able to bear that. So, that range is expressed in terms of R that is called dynamic range okay. and R depends on the type of stimulus like thermal, mechanical. So, at certain temperature I start feeling cold, but up to what temperature I will. Be. So, this is important this is very important for designing a comfortable clothing okay. and similarly mechanical receptors are also location of the body at which location it is there depending on the type of number of sensors. Or so, this at location we it depends and there are different types of sensation in our daily activities. Okay. So, the tactile sensation which includes the pressure, texture, prick, puncture, thermal, softness, wetness, sleeve, addition, friction, dynamic contact and release. So, dynamic contact all these things are directly or indirectly related to clothing ok, pain ok. So, and shape of the object age whether it is embossing or stick surface texture. So, these are the tactile responses some of the sensory perceptions are actually vibro tactile sensation due to the vibration direct or indirect vibration ok. Like tickling, itching ok, buzzing sound. So, these are the sensation we receive our uh, body different types of uh, vibration ok. And most of these sensations are linked with different tactile stimulation of the body. So, these are the tactile sensation and um, vibro tactile they are related ok. Now, we will discuss that uh, how this neurophysiological sensation get transmitted. So, we have discussed that it is important to identify the specific actuators required to produce different types of human neurophysiological sensation which results so, with a different tactile display like pressure, touch and prickle ok. So, first we have to get uh, this uh, sensation basically the different types of tactile display transmits the energy to the skin surface. So, may be it is a vibration may be tickling or may be something my touch or so they actually send energy to the skin ok. First this all this stimulation we have discussed earlier. So, this all sends energy to the skin and then from the skin it goes to different sensors. If it is warm, warm sensor received, if it is vibration, if it is high pressure. So, that means, first it is uh, the stimulation is there, then it is uh, it is basically uh, like uh, different types of pressure touch pick pickle then it sends signal energy to the skin from the skin surface the synergy energy transmits to the tactile receptors different receptors if it and then from that uh, receptor there are it uh, it gets transmitted to the brain and all the through the spinal cord so there are different methods to flow the tactile responses so, tactile receptor gets signal ok. This the low frequency low amplitude mechanical deformation. So, how this mechanical stimulation gets 
uh, that the this because gives the signal to the receptors is the way it is one is the low frequency low amplitude mechanical deformation. So, if it touches, so it may deform the skin as well as the receptors as we have discussed. Then vibrotactile sim stimulation through the vibration it gets stimulated, electrotactile stimulation through electric current it gets stimulated, forced feedback display. So, so like it is a some uh, uh, kinesthetic uh, so like if it is moving. So, that type of uh, display it is there, thermal sensation with the heat it is flowing. So, that type of sensation it gets. So, this all these ways the sensation gets uh, transmitted and another way is that through air or liquid jet or liquid current. So, through air so, air is blowing. So, that sensation we can get. So, when if air is blowing as we have discussed that our uh, hair through hair follicle nerve bending we get sensation. These are the six different ways we get the tactile flow of tactile sensation to our body. Okay. Now, one by one we will discuss the low frequency and low amplitude mechanical deformation. What is that? The low frequency low amplitude mechanical deformation is responsible for sensation of contact of any object with our skin which may be continuous or intermittent. So, that with the help of this. So, when the skin is at has high the human skin has high in sensitivity with the intermittent contact okay, in which an object is brought in and out of contact of the body. So, if it is touching continuously or it is um, it's releasing its touch, so that sensation is uh, very active in our skin. Okay. Whereas, if uh, an object is uh, it's, uh, at constantly in touch the sensitivity may not be that high. Like vibrotactile sensation, it sense the matter when they are vibrating in nature against the skin. This can sense a frequency, send a sense of frequency is about say 250 hertz. So, that type of uh, sensors are present we have discussed earlier. So, this uh, at 250 hertz, so at, um, at that high uh, frequency our body gets same sensation, okay. it gets transmitted. So, vibration may be effectively transmitted through air gap and again due to high intermittent contact of sensation. So, through air gap suppose some vibration uh, something is vibrating through air gap it gets uh, sense uh, signal or something is continuously uh, we have we have actually touched at very high frequency something is vibrating at high frequency that sensation we can get okay. and our sensors get signal it is getting transmitted. So, vibrotactile sensation is uh, these are the different techniques available to actually send signal tactile sense signal in our body. Okay. So, something is vibrating if it is touching then we can get signal. Okay. This is an examiner this is a participant okay. here. Uh, some uh, vibrating object is in uh, is, is touching and he is trying to get the signal and this is another this uh, here is a textured surface and if someone you are moving the finger okay and then there will be a vibration so due to the textured surface there will be certain vibration this is the direction of vibration and the that is this is the uh, stimulator okay that we can get the that signal so, this is this, there will be vibration stimulator and our skin gets some vibrating signal and it gets transmitted. Similarly, uh, the electrotactile sensation, the electrotactile stimulation is when a current is passed through a skin, okay, we get some sudden signal, sudden shock, which the it excited, uh, it excites the uh, sensory system directly rather than the tactile. So, it directly it sent uh, signal to the sensory system, we get some shock. Okay. This is called 
electro tactile stimulation and it by this we can test whether our sensations are working or not okay and forced feedback display as we have discussed it's a kinesthetic type sensory system okay and they interact with the different types of sensor like friction vibration so when something is moving the whatever sensation we get it's called forced feedback display like when we move our our cloth uh, starts slipping from our body, it gets some uh, movement, uh, uh, relative movement. So that gives this uh, type of uh, feedback system display. Okay, it's kinesthetic, tactile sensory system, like friction, vibration, and thermal sensation are related with the inward and outward flow of heat. Okay from our body through the uh, by the conduction of the skin okay, or convection or radiation. Okay. Heat is transmitted to the heat sensitive receptors by conduction through tissues. So, this is another way of the uh, through conduction the heat is uh, we receive our skin receives heat from the environment through conduction, convection and radiation and then this heat is transmitted to the from the skin to the receptor by conduction okay, through the tissue okay. and then our uh, that uh, thermal receptor that uh, they sense the uh, signal and that that ultimately this uh, sensation it is uh, sent to the uh, brain. Conduction. Next is that air or liquid, okay, in the form of jet or current, stimulates either hair follicle receptors by moving the hair, or by different type of mechanical receptors by exciting with the force or vibrating skin. So, this is uh, very important. Suppose air is moving slowly, if it is able to distort our hair that means our hair follicle receptor will sense okay, the movement of air okay, and it gets it gives a signal. Suppose there is no hair, so still we get feeling of movement, uh, that, that type of or uh, movement or air is moving or air jet is there. So, if air jet is projected against our skin that means, it will give some pressure sensation. So, our mechanoreceptors will be activated okay, by the force or it is vibrator. It, it starts vibrating the skin. So, these are the ways we get our uh, the tactile senses and responses are getting transmitted in our body. Okay. Now, we will discuss that the physiological requirement of our body that is thermal regulation, the thermal temperature regulation, how to actually control the temperature or body controls the temperature by physiology okay. and accordingly we can select our clothing to keep our body comfortable. Okay. So, in this segment we will discuss the temperature regulation. Okay. So, metabolic heat and body temperature it is a it is it is a known it is a uh, for a different. So, the risk is that if it goes beyond plus minus 5 degree Celsius, then our body will be at risk. Okay. Like uh, normal body temperature is 37 degree Celsius, if it is it goes below 32 degree Celsius, it is uh, hypothermia and hyperthermia will be there, if it is going above 43 degree Celsius. Okay. So, this is the temperature it is a the, the within this range 
or we can survive, but ideally the temperature should be around say 37 degrees Celsius, 36 to 38 that range it is a it is a comfortable range. Okay. So, 36 uh, normal activity the body requires a uh, narrow range. So, 36 to 38 degree Celsius is the uh, normal range. So, beyond that range we will, we will not be able to survive. So, body temperature how to control the body temperature physiologically. So, body temperature is controlled by thermal regulation. So, our uh, internal physiology it actually controls the body temperature automatically, but our clothing's function is to help it assist the if in case if it is required. If it is required then our clothing can assist to keep the body temperature constant under control and the thermal that is uh, the body temperature it is actually that uh, thermophysiological activities uh, physiological activities are there. So, that way it can control. So, it is by thermal radiation. So, our body can release the heat by radiation by adjusting the diameter of peripheral blood vessel. So, that we will discuss like uh, vasoconstriction or vasodilation. So, by changing the diameter of the blood vessel it controls the flow rate of blood accordingly our body temperature is controlled by sweating. So, when our body gets heated up, so our physiological activity automatically it starts working and our sweat glands get activated and we start sweating. By sweating we release body heat. But our clothing's function is to actually manage this sweat. If our clothing does not actually absorb this sweat, then our body temperature cannot be controlled, our body temperature will keep on increasing. And one is that temperature uh, body temperature control, and next is that the distribution of skin temperature. So, skin temperature our body temperature as we have seen the core temperature is within 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. Typically it should be around 37 degrees Celsius, but what happened to the skin temperature? Skin temperature is not uh, constant at different parts of the body at different environmental temperature it varies it changes. Okay. So, throughout the body it is not uniform and lower in the extremities means from say uh, our uh, that stomach from this part. So, at the extreme point like if the finger okay, at, at the extreme point it gets at it reduces the temperature reduces okay. and at the trunk zone the body temperature is almost it is a it is a higher always okay. and it changes with the environmental temperature. So, with the as the temp environmental temperature increases or the uh, skin temperature also changes. Okay. Higher average temperature of skin, skin is higher at summer than winter. So, in winter our skin temperature is lower than the summer average temperature, but our body core temperature is always constant okay. it is it uh, uh, irrespective of winter or summer body core temperature remains same. Now, let us see these are the temperature distribution of our body different of, uh, of the skin at different condition like neutral condition at neutral condition it is uh, may be around say 35, 36 degree Celsius temperature. Neutral condition it is a this is the uh, temp at say 34, 35 degree Celsius forehead and all. That. So, we, we see at normal temperature neutral stable condition the temperature 
range of temperature is not that high. It is a it is a maximum at say around 35.8 in forehead okay, and we can say we say 32.7 in that cuff zone. So, that is the uh, temperature difference is there, but if we see in the cold uh, condition cold stable condition. So, we will see that minimum is at the finger or foot at the extremity it is actually as low as say 21 degree Celsius that and at the front neck or back neck it is 34 degree Celsius. So, at that zone it gives higher temperature okay. abdomen it is at so at different portions the temp this is actually this temperature is for unclothed person for unclothed person the this is the temperature distribution okay similarly if we see at the summer the temperature is high so warm stable condition the this is the front and back neck it's around 36 37 degree celsius but the finger you can see when it was in the cold it was 21 degree celsius but in the uh, when in warm condition it's very high so that is the temperature and here we will see the an warm condition the temperature distribution is almost uniform throughout the body so uh, warm condition so we can see in normal condition it the there are uh, certain range of temperature so around say 3 to 4 degree celsius but in in cold condition the range has become around 15 degree celsius so that's the range but in warm condition so due to the why is it so because at warm condition due to our physiological automatic physiological control of the human body temperature so this due to this activity it's almost same so due to uh, secretion of our sweat and different activities that we will discuss that it maintains the skin temperature almost constant okay so how to control the uh, body temperature the disturbance in stability of body temperature due to extreme heat in summer or cold in winter is controlled by internal physiological mechanism of the body. So, body internal physiology maintains the body temperature. So, this although the skin temperatures are different, but body temperature it is controlled. So, how is it controlled? So, in winter the reduced temperature is controlled by increased metabolic rate. So, in winter our metabolic rate is high. So, it is automatically it is a metabolic rate higher. So, that it increase it increase the generation of heat body heat to maintain the body temperature. So, winter because our in winter our automatically we start releasing the body heat. So, to maintain that uh, so our uh, automatic uh, the physiology uh, physiologically it increases the metabolic head, uh, rate and constriction of the peripheral blood vessel. That means, the diameter of the blood vessel reduces okay, which actually help in reduction in blood flow. So, blood flow has got its other important aspects, but along with that it also helps in maintaining the body temperature by changing the rate of flow okay. this part we will discuss. Okay. So, increase metabolic rate and constriction of peripheral blood vessel whereas, in summer it actually just opposite thing happens. So, where the metabolic rate in summer is reduced lower okay. and constriction in place of constriction it is a dilation takes place. So, in summer another activity takes place which is 
sweating. By sweating, our body tries to release the heat immediately okay, with the water, okay, with the sweat. The sweating process is activated to reduce the body temperature. So, if body temperature goes up, so immediately our body actually releases the sweat and such so that it gets cooled down. So, it releases the sweat, but if the sweat starts evaporating, then the cooling effect will be enhanced, the sweating process then. Now, we can see this is the there these are the blood circulation system okay. through the vascular system in the skin assist the peripheral uh, principal mechanism of thermal re, uh, regulation. Okay. So, this actually the this blood circulation it measure it actually controls the body temperature. So, blood uh, circulation has got its um, important function of actually uh, sending the nutrients to different parts of the body along with that the whatever the blood vessels are there in uh, skin due to the transmission of blood it actually controls the body temperature like uh, from uh, the artery and vein. So, from like uh, through the artery actually it uh, goes uh, the from heart actually it goes to uh, throughout the body. So, there what happened the, the constriction if take place. So, it will actually give uh, the slow movement of uh, heat. Okay. So, primary function of blood circulation is to deliver nutrients and oxygen to the tissues. So, that is the primary function we have nothing to do with that, okay. but to maintain the body temperature okay, to uh, in addition to this that blood circulation assists the principal mechanism of thermal equilibrium. So, our body core temperature has to be kept constant. So, it is actually kept within the normal temperature when so it uh, keeps the heat within the human body that means, it, it does not allow the heat to flow out. How does it do? It is actually by constriction of the blood vessel. So, if it is constricted that means, it uh, the blood flow will be reduced and so the it is it will the heat will not reach to the up to the skin to that rate. It will remain within our body. So, our body will remain warm. So, this phenomena is known as vasoconstriction, but in summer we need to release our body heat. So, we need our body heat to flow out okay. and that is done by the, the which is uh, its outer flow which is done by the vasodilation. So, it gets dilated Okay, and then it flows out the rate of blood flow increases. So, our uh, body gets cooled down. Okay. So, due to the control of blood flow we can maintain our body heat. So, this is the this is the there and uh, I will discuss other uh, physiological uh, phenomena, but all this phenomena that this uh, mechanism works within a certain limit, okay. but if it exceeds then our body will be under threat. So, then our body temperature may increases above the safe range, safe zone, safe temperature and it may drops down. Okay. So, that these are uh, the physiological uh, phenomena by which we can our body uh, temperature gets uh, controlled disturbance in stability of body temperature like in winter the reduced temperature is controlled by increase the metabolic rate. So, metabolic rate is increased. So, body gets uh, body generates extra heat constriction of peripheral blood vessel. So, we uh, try to retain the body heat. 
So, heat is retained within the body by reducing the blood circulation as we have discussed to the skin. So, the skin does not get the blood at that rate and so heat is retained there and if this system this total vasoconstriction and metabolic rate that is we have discussed if these are insufficient to retain the body heat then what happens then the body starts another mechanism okay this is by tensioning the muscle it starts tensioning the muscle and then leading to its vibrator then people will because our uh, it's uh, tensioning the muscle the you will see that our uh, the uh, hairs at the skin will get with it would get erected so that is the ten by tensioning the muscle and then will start shivering so by shivering it's by muscle the so body start body tries to get extra heat mechanical heat by mechanical energy so that extra heat is provided by the shivering okay uh, to get the uh, extra energy extra heat and it starts at the trunk region and then gradually spread over the other limbs okay so that is the these are the mechanisms we get now these are the physiological mechanism but if we start so if metabolic increasing metabolic rate fails then constriction if a constriction fails to uh, retain the body heat then uh, shivering start you know shivering is uh, it's not enough to maintain the body heat Supp suppose body heat uh, starts still it's uh, uh, dropping then what happen so if we start shivering then what we do normally if a person is start shivering if we wrap a cloth around him if a wrap a cloth then we will immediately stop shivering because it it provides insulation the cloth is providing the insulation that is the extra layer it it actually stops the flow of uh, reduce the flow of heat from the body and he will stop start feeling comfortable what does it show our body physiology has its own action okay body physiology due to our body own body physiology we get automatically uh, we get to control the body temperature in case of cold as we have discussed by increasing metabolic rate by uh, vasoconstriction by shivering we can control but if it fails if it reaches its extreme point then our clothing we, through by using proper clothing we can make ourselves comfortable so the activity of this clothing which we must understand and this all this rate of change rate of shivering when a person will start shivering and rate of constriction depends on the temperature okay so that accordingly we can design our clothing to make ourselves comfortable okay on the other hand in summer in summer the opposite phenomena happens the physio body physiology it uh, opposite thing is happening what is that it starts sweating process so sweating through extra sweating so when we uh, release the extra sweat so immediately by that we want to uh, reduce the heat and in uh, winter we have seen due to to reduce to retain the body heat to retain body heat the vasoconstriction was required that that means the flow of blood to redu uh, is reduced so that the body heat doesn't get transmitted from inside to the through the skin but here in summer we need to enhance the release of body body heat 
and the vascular system through vascular system we heat we release the heat by the dilation of the blood vessel this is called vasodilation. So, sweating process is activated and then vasodilation starts ok. So, to control the increase of body heat the vascular system in the skin enhance the release of body heat through the skin by vasodilation ok. And this diagram shows the detailed activity of the our body physiology to control the body temperature. So, this is the normal condition ok, normal condition we try to maintain our body, it is a normal uh, condition that body remain always tries to keep the uh, body temperature normal, but if the temperature is too hot at it is uh, too hot it affects the hypothalamus which is actually hot there, there are in hypothalamus there are two types of centers so hot center and another is cold center. This actually it is uh, it is present in our brain human brain which sense the hot and cold. So, the if it is too hot the our the brain sense it is too hot then it starts the physiological activities ok. So, this physiological due to the physiological activity then all these activities will start. So, first the sensor will sense and ultimately it will send the signal to the brain, brain will get activated and it will start the physiological activities. So, this hypothalamus the hot center in extreme hot temperature it will give signal to the physiological activity it will actually it will activate the this physiological performance. Then that is the vasodilation of the surface of capillary shuts and shuts the vessel constrict that is vessel constriction will shut and vasodilation will start ok. And this part so control how to control the body temperature. So, we will start we will discuss in uh, the next class ok. So, thank you.